Hey, Paul here for Retro Gaming Arts, and today we are going to be modding this clear blue Japanese PS2, and we're going to be throwing a Crystal 2.0 chip into it. Now, this video really isn't going to be, hey, this is how you install a Crystal chip. It's just, I wanted to go over a lot of the different soldering techniques, and I thought it would be really cool to use this 10-year-old uh, vintage uh, mod chip. You can't really get these crystal chips anymore, but the install to them is relatively similar to that of a Modbo, which is the Chinese clone equivalent of the Matrix Infinity, which was another chip that was similar to the crystal chip back in the day when these uh, came around. Now the crystal chip doesn't actually have the auto, the full-fledged auto boot feature that the Matrix Infinity does, so you have to do a boot sequence when loading P auto boots PS2 games. But if you would like to find out more about the differences between all of these uh, from back in the day, leave a comment and I'll probably end up making a video about it if enough people want to see it. So anyway, like I said, this is going to be much, much more heavily focused on on the install itself. I'm not really doing a full-fledged uh, breakdown with like all of that where I like circle this is how you take it apart. If you like to see how to take one of these apart, I did a PS2, I did a couple other PS2 videos, I actually even did one just like this. So if you'd like to see more about that, feel free to go check out my other PS2s. So anyway, now we're on to the soldering and the install, so let's get on to it. First thing I like to do is and the way I get my wires, I pick the colors, and then I'll usually pull a relatively long, as you see I'm pulling both strands at the same time. I snip it, and then what I do is I'll just pick a length that I want all the pieces to be, and then I'll just fold it up over and over and over, and I'll fold it enough so that it equals, okay, I got 10 strands, and then I'll just snip the edge, have boom, 10 cut strands. Makes my life a little easier, so you only have to make uh, like three cuts instead of cutting each one. And then after I have all my wires cut, I strip all of them. You see how the strips are all different lengths? This is un unnecessarily, you don't have to do this, this is just the way I like to do it. Um, is I put all of them in a pair of uh, flush cutters and I get all of the, um, all of the conductors uh, at the same length. I like to cut all the conductors the same by lining up the insulation with the flush cutters. And then once I have all of those cut, it's really easy to flux and then solder it. Speaking of soldering, we're going to be soldering it to the BIOS chip. That's the main point for all of these mods. And the install diagram said to use these points right here, but we're going to trace them back. And then we're going to solder it directly to the chip. And the install diagrams for any of these is very, very, very difficult to... Um, to find not very difficult but there's a lot of them so make sure you have the right one so and like I just said or well I didn't say it but the text said it liquid flux or jelly flux doesn't really matter I feel it's your personal preference and when going to solder the chip this is how this is how I soldered to the chip I coat the whole thing in flux I have my wire covered in flux and uh, the wires tinned and then I put a little bit of solder on the tip of my iron and I just tap it to the leg of the chip that's exactly how I do it and here we go we have it going again the flux really helps to uh, make the solder adhere so here we have another angle of the exact same thing and the reason why I'm hitting it multiple multiple times is because I want to get the best possible solder joint like right there it's attached but it's not that good so we just keep going again and with points this small, that's why I like to just have a little bit of the solder on the tip of the iron. In my uh, opinion, I, this is the tip I've been using. If you look at my last PS2 uh, modding video, this wasn't the tip. I used more of a, a, a tip with like a little angle on it. I don't really use that tip anymore because I lost it, so I can't use it. So I had to adapt to this tip. But in this tip works fine. It works great. And... It's small enough, but it also is big, big enough to the point where it still has heat. Now, if you look, this is zoomed in, but when I was doing this, if you look at the third pin, the, the conductor is just sitting on top of the solder. So it's connected, but it's a poor connection. So what I do after all of my solder joints is I whip out my phone, go into camera, and bust out that eight times zoom, and that's how I see my solder joints. 
And when I see the quality of my solder joints, I then go back and I reflow it, which is what I, exactly what I'm doing here. And I looked again with the camera. Okay, so I, I noticed that it was bad. Not bad, but they weren't as good as they could be. So then I looked at it, reflowed it. Now they're good solid, solid solder joints. And that's the most important aspect of all of this. You're gonna see me do some pretty wiring. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll see, you will have seen multiple different nice wiring jobs on PS2s, but that's not the important part. The important part is your solder joints. And I feel in the last video I made about this, I didn't stress that enough, or like I, I wasn't skilled enough back then to make my solder joints good. And um, so that's why I'm making this video again, is to just go more in depth and show you exactly like the soldering aspect of it because that's to me that's what's the most important is a good solid connection and as you see on the on this side that's exactly the same thing I'm doing as I did on the other side a little bit of solder everything's fluxed up really good and then just tap it to it a few times and then you're pretty much just flowing the solder into place the flux really helps for that what the flux does is the flux pretty much kills all the oxygen and when it kills all the oxygen it makes the surface essentially like really really clean which helps create a stronger better connection and it helps the solder flow in place and like boom like you see that it just like flew like like flowed flewed whatever the past tense of flow is it flowed really nicely now this one sometimes you have to work it a little bit more like this one didn't go that well because you can see the, the conductor is actually laying on top of the solder. So that means I need a little bit more solder. So add a little bit more solder. And that's it. That's not it. There's so much more to it. But that's, that's how I do it. That's how I like to do it. It's really important that both parts that you're, that you're going for are tinned. That you have them both tinned up. And then when both points are tinned, you use the iron to apply heat to melt them together. Now in some of these instances, it's really hard to tin that resistor. So I just load it up with flux, have a little bit of tin on my, on my, um, on my wire. By the way, it's 30 AWG wire. Uh, that's, that's the wire you use for this mod. And then for power and ground, you use um, like 26, 24. Use thicker, uh, nice, nice thickness but for all the other points 30 awg kynar that's what's best in my opinion so here this is actually the other side of the motherboard so and now i'm threading these through to the other side because that's where all the other points are with this conveniently placed hole and so now that i have all of my points connected and soldered now is where i go into the wire management aspect of it which uh, i'm just kind of going to breeze through a little bit because there's a lot to it. So this way you can still see me doing it, but you don't have to sit here for uh, an hour and watch it or however long it took. Just I'm using alcohol to clean up some of the existing flux because we're gonna be using a tiny little bit of super glue and that super glue, you gotta use it on a clean surface. Keep in mind the way super glue works, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe if somebody really knows, please uh, comment. But I'm pretty sure all it does is just melt the plastic together and binds it together that way. Not entirely sure, but that's what I feel is happening. So you got to be careful with how much you use. So now we're on to chip placement. This is approximately where I'm going to place the chip. I don't think it's exactly where I ended up placing it, but it's approximately. So here's more of the wire management which is just a lot of tweezer work. It's just the tweezers, really. I wouldn't be able to do any of that without these uh, precision tweezers. So if this is something you wanna do, get yourself a pair of these tweezers, boom. That's, what it, that's, that's the secret to wire management. A, a drop of super glue and some tweezers. Trying to get it as nice, nice little bend going on right here. And then we're gonna apply the super glue to the top. I always like to only do it on the top of the wires because I don't want it to ruin the solder mask of the board. And then for no reason whatsoever, I'm just cleaning up the excess solder or super glue from on top of that chip with my tweezers, just scraping it off ever so, um, scraping off whatever 
It makes it nice. I don't know why. This is totally unnecessary. You do not have to do this. You do not have to do any of this with the wires uh, when you're doing any of these PS2 mods. It's just, I don't know, I thoroughly enjoy it, so I like to do it. So now, um, we're about ready to go to the chip. So we're going to add a little bit of flux. And like I said before, jelly flux, uh, liquid flux, it's your preference. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. I have both types of flux. I use both ones in different situations. It all really depends on what I'm doing. Uh, sometimes I'll use both types of flux for uh, each, for the same mod. And the key is uh, the solder joints though. And flux helps with that. So you use flux, tin up all your parts, flow the solder on, and uh, the key, uh, another key is having your point that you're going to be soldering to tinned and then having the item or the, the connection you're going to be soldering to it tinned. So that means tin all your wires and then tin all your joints. So in this situation, I actually didn't do what I just said, but I can make it work. But that's what you want to do most of the time. So here what I'm doing is I'm burning the insulation off, which because it's so close, it's kind of hard to strip these little very, very short wires. So I burn the insulation off by rounding, rounding my iron around it. Now I'm having a little bit of trouble getting this one to go on perfectly. It's probably because there's no flux on the, on the, on the wire itself. It's on, there's flux and solder on the chip but not on this actual wire. So it takes me a little bit more finicking, or whatever you wanna call it, to actually get it in there and get a nice, solid, smooth, like, joint. And then here, this is how I get them to be so short like that, is I line it up with the tweezers as to where it's gonna go, and then I burn the insulation off by running my tip around the insulation. Now, I don't like doing this, but it's, it, it's harder to it would be really hard to strip that wire because that wire is so short so here we go again doing the exact same thing just getting it to flow over and trying to get that perfect uh, melt that perfect solder joint and now after you saw those were like my worst two out of all of this but now I'm gonna go and do it a whole bunch and fast forward after I get these wires up if you noticed, if you did see my uh, how I mod my PS2 videos, you'll notice that I actually didn't do it in this style. Uh, there's a couple other, there's a couple different styles I like to do when doing these installs. And if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you'll see multiple different iterations of pretty much the same thing. You'll see ones where the wires are underneath the chip. You'll see them where they uh, bend and bend in curves. You'll see them right angles. So it's a lot of just mixing all these different techniques and different situations. But like I said also, none of this wire management actually matters. As long as you have a good solid solder joint and it works, that's what matters. I mean, you don't want your wires too long, but uh, you also don't want... Technically, you don't even want them this short. Like if, uh, if you were like an actual solder tech at like an actual factory working for a major company, they wouldn't want to see this. They would want you to have uh, like a quarter inch of extra wire and it's called a service loop. And that's in case any mistakes gets made, you actually have a quarter inch of wire left. And speaking of mistakes, I actually ended up making a mistake right here, right exactly here. Look at that timing. Was I forget which two points, but I switched O and P or uh, I switched P and uh, and I'm not sure exactly which two. I figured it out later on in the video. Uh, before I play this, I show this thing working, I ended up figuring it out. But that's why you want service loops because the service loop gives you that little bit of extra space so that if you do make a mistake, you have that extra wire to work with. That, so, side tangent aside about service loops, I don't know why. Um, I don't use them clearly, but that doesn't matter. That's because I don't want to do it. But that's the like that's what you should do if you were in a factory and you had a boss. So anyway, we're going back to. I'm just gonna finish up the rest of these joints, solder them all back in, same exact way using my tweezers, burning the insulation, 
trying to get a nice good melt. And what I do is I'll go back and I'll actually end up reflowing all of these joints. I just want to get them all connected so that they're kind of like how I did with the BIOS. You get them all connected so everything's in its right place, going to its right spot. And here I am going back and reflowing each one. And then you can actually even use the iron to uh, clean up any excess insulation that you need to burn off to try to make it nice. And I don't know. That's what I like to do. I like to try to do it as best as I possibly can each time. The part is every time I finish one of these, I immediately look at it and I'm just like, I can do better. And that's exactly how I'm feeling as I'm watching this video. It's just like, man, this one wasn't as good as I could have done it. And that, yeah, you know, it makes me it makes me eager to do another one because I then know like, all right, I can do it better now. And that's how I feel and I don't really share that too much with people, but whatever put it on YouTube I'll let you guys know it's okay and I don't know I always felt that way about a lot of the things that I do and I always just want to just do it better because I like the challenge I like to challenge myself and that's why ps2 mods like this are the most fun for me is because it's a challenge and it's really cool I love ps2 RPGs and fighting games so now that we're almost coming up to the uh, end of the of the mods and I'm gonna show if this thing even worked or not or if it doesn't who knows I guess you'll find out a little bit more um, just scraping off that excess excess uh, super glue just to for no reason totally unnecessary just to make it look nice <clears throat> but that's pride so maybe maybe it is necessary and then uh, after that, we're also going to clean up the excess flux. Like if you saw the close-ups of some of the solder joints, you'll notice that brown, that like burnt flux. So I'm going to go and get rid of that. Q-tip, alcohol, wipe it off, makes it clean. And uh, But we got a few more solder joints before we get to that. And it's the same thing. Now I'm burning the insulation off. And that's because like these wires were really short uh, and I didn't have a lot of room to play with. So we had to go and burn the insulation. Usually I like to use strippers. You can use uh, any sort of stripper, fingernail cutter. I think I did the whole last video with fingernail cutters just, just because. And now right here we have the reset, uh, the reset wire essentially. What that does is it, um, it times the chip with the BIOS and times the chip when to inject its code into the BIOS. So that's that wire. It's not labeled reset on the crystal chip. <clears throat> But on the mod bows it is, and on the Matrix Infinities it is. So here we, um, I believe this is power. This is our power point. Tinned wire, tin the point, melt, push them together, perfect solder joint. That's how you do that. And that's that right there is the message I was trying to convey all along. And here we go, same thing. Now we're doing ground though. We're gonna do ground, boom. You see how easy that just flowed in? And I got, uh, we're going to make it really short. Now we're going to solder it directly to this ground plane that goes all along the outside of the board. We're going to add a little bit of flux to the wire, to the board. And that's our ground. And now we're going to tin the wire. And then I think just by adding solder and just pushing it down, it'll just go right, right in. So just putting it right there. And the excess solder from my iron just flowed right onto it. Made a nice sturdy connection. We're even still going to reflow it. Make sure it gets a nice good melt or whatever. And then uh, here we go wiring up the wiring up power. Our final, our final joint. And then we're going to pop this thing back together and test it and see if it even worked. Even though for whatever reason I don't think I liked that uh, power wire so I think I moved it. Here you can, you can kind of see under my finger. Now I'm cleaning up the flux. Do a little half circle. I ended up changing it when you see like the finished product. See, it's not a circle anymore. It's now like a little like diagonal. Oh well. So here's the finished chip install. And like I said, if you want to if you want to know about all the old PS2 chips, uh, let me know in the comments. I'll make a video about that. All the differences. It's just cool to learn and just cool to know. And now we're gonna pop this thing back together. See how uh, see how it works. Fantastic chip, the crystal chip. I, abs I, I really like the crystal chip. I really like the Matrix Infinities as well, the original ones. 
great chips. Honestly, all, all of them are really good. They're all, they all have their own like subtle differences between each one, but they're all great. The reliability is really strong, as opposed to like on the mod bows where uh, it's, they're a Chinese clone, so sometimes you can get bad flashes on them. Sometimes they don't exactly work. They actually don't even have the clock signal inside of the um, inside of the chip like the Matrix Infinities do. So they actually pull the clock signal from the PS2. But what are you gonna do? Chinese clones, they're okay. All right, moment of truth. That burned PS2 game, PS2 test game or whatever it was. Let's see if it works. On my, uh, here we go, oops. All right. We're spinning up, we're spinning up good. Let's see if we boot. On my little wall-mounted test monitor right here. Take a nice little close-up of that. All right, here we go. Of course my test game's a Squaresoft game. What Squaresoft PS2 game could this be? As my test game to test, oh, it's not a game, it's a demo! Final Fantasy X demo. All right, so, Crystal Chip install was a su success. Had a lot of fun doing it. This is a super cool PlayStation to do it to. We're gonna go test some Tekken, but I don't know why, because the burn game just works, so, you know, the region free game's gonna work as well. Spin it up, got our little controller. All right, let's see if Tekken works. Tekken, all right, there we go. So now we're gonna just pop this whole thing back together. Uh, thank you guys very, very much for watching. Throw, yeah, throw my little sticker in there. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. I hope this uh, helped in some way. I hope this was cool uh, just to see this whole thing go down. Uh, like I said, if you want to see more PS2 stuff, I have a bunch of different PS2 videos already. I have, a, I guess, a lot of Sony videos because that's, that's my favorite uh, game system. So feel free to check those out. And now right here, we're gonna add the finishing touch, which is, I'm really actually really happy to have this chip. I'm really happy that I was able to get the sticker uh, with it. Cause I guess they came with stickers back in the day. So I have one so you can put this sticker on your system to show like, oh yo, I got a crystal chip. It's like old and yellowed. So that's, obs this is obscurity of obscurity is modding PlayStations with these old vintage chips. But hey, it's a lot of fun. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. Uh, thank you. Thank you for everything. Let me know if you want to see that mod chip mod type videos you want to see. Let me know in the comments. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.